Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Tolhurst and this is the Charlie Tolhurst Show live for the 11th of June. Um, wow, second show of the month already, isn't it going quick indeed? And we have plenty of news to talk about tonight. I'm joined by late party supporters Zach James to round up all latest news. Hello Zach. Hello Charlie, hello mate. Now this evening's news agenda is full of interesting news, but we want to start off with the news from the United Kingdom's um, political world. Now... As you would have noticed by one of my tweets earlier when the show went out live, there was a little vote gift that appeared on the tweet. It meant that Boris Johnson faced a no confidence vote on Monday earlier this week in which 41 percent of his Conservative Party voted no confidence in the prime minister. 148 Tory MPs voting against um, Mr Johnson. However, though, 211 of them supporting him. It seems like 144 of them were on the payroll indeed by Bojo on that one. Now, Zach, I have to say, for the Prime Minister, I have to say, in my own view, I think he's in a lot of trouble if a lot of his parties turned on him here. Yeah, um, I, I certainly agree, Charlie. No, no doubt about that. I certainly agree. I mean, I was we were just chatting last week, Charlie, um, and then we were speculating quite a lot whether this was going to happen or not. Um, given that the rumours were sort of bubbling up and everything. And then, you know, you know how the world goes, Charlie, so fast and so um, events move quickly. Um, we enjoyed the diamond. Uh, we saw, we saw, we enjoyed the Platinum Jubilee weekend. And then next minute, we know, um, on Monday, we're back to politics and news. And blimey, we were at politics, Charlie. Um, we had the confidence vote um, um, as well, which was um, pretty significant. Um it, 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 I have to say, basing on the results, Charlie, I agree with, with your obsess, assessment um, of what happened because um, what went on, it clearly to me, is a prime minister that's in, a, I think, quite a bit of trouble to, um, in my opinion, like, like yours. I, I agree with what your assessment is about this um, as well. So there was two, there was a about 300 and 59 odd um, Tory MPs that took part in this um, vote, Charlie, um, which is about, and you obviously need um, about 15%, aka 54 votes. Um, 56, is it 56, 54, something like that, oh, yeah. um, to to be able to trigger no confidence vote. So you've got to have 56 less, 54, 56 letters in, um, about 15% of the Conservative Parliamentary Party to trigger a confidence vote in the Prime Minister. We did get that figure. Oh, we did get that announcement on Monday. The threshold was reached whilst Boris Johnson was watching the um, the, the platinum pageant um, on Sunday. Um, he was told beforehand, obviously, he had to keep a very straight face um, about what was going on. And, yeah, he did until tomorrow, when, until Monday, sorry, when he um, faced a no-confidence vote. And let me give you the figures, actually. It was um, for the, the four vote was, I think, it was 211 and the no vote was 148. So he did have, he needed a simple majority, Charlie. Um, he did get that simple majority um, as, as well, which, which is the most important thing. But what was, uh, I think, Charlie, what people um, need to understand, I think, you know, um, is it's not, it's not if you win, it's the margin of victory. Um, and compared to previous no confidence vote, Theresa May got 63% out of. Tory MPs on his side to win a no confidence vote, and he she achieved that by about midday, uh, around about, and we didn't know the public figures of Johnson. We didn't even reach that threshold until obviously the time of the vote announced, child. But fifty nine percent voted confidence the prime minister, forty one against. So the forty ones are bigger than compared to say Theresa May last time when it would happen in twenty eighteen. Um, Margaret Thatcher's leadership battle, he she won. By 55%. Um, so Johnson got a little more of a, of a share, um, but also 41% no as well. So it was about, about the shit, same as well. There were 4% of the sustain at the time um, as well. But yeah, I, I, I think I take this from looking at it, Charlie, that I I think, you know, the fact that 148 of, of Tory MPs are prepared to vote no confidence in Boris Johnson is a very telling sign, Charlie, that backbenchers are not happy and the, the Conservative Party is very divided at the moment. Now, keep in mind, considering the rules of the 1922 committee, Charlie, which means they can't have a vote confidence for up until a year now, 
Uh, although they can change the vote, the, the committee rules, if they really wanted to on this. Um, it, it, it shows there's a very divided Tory party, Charlie. Um, and it, it reveals that Boris Johnson really is a dead man walking. People sort of speculate, thinking, well, this is the, this is the start of the end of Boris Johnson. Maybe it is. But Boris Johnson isn't one to go easy, Charlie. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens in the next couple of months. Obviously, he needs to develop um, his reputation back with Tory MPs. I expect he'll go, go for some very hardline tactics to get them back. Um, I mean, next week we're due to see legislation for the Northern Ireland Protocol to override parts of it coming in next week. Not debated, but a legislation to, to introduce Charlie. So that presumably that's to get his Brexit MPs on his side um, as well. So, yeah, he's going to have to win some hearts and minds back, Charlie, if if he wants to retain the confidence of the, of the party and to go into the next election as Prime Minister, uh, as the Conservative leader um, for Prime Minister, Charlie. So it's going to be very difficult for Boris Johnson. He's got around these sort of things before, but um, this one, it's uh, going to be a bit of a tricky one, I think. Zach, my, my issue with Boris at the moment, and obviously someone here, people watching this show will probably know I'm very critical of the Prime Minister um, on a lot of things, even though I am sort of technically, as you view me, so I, I view myself as like a, a conservative person. I don't think... Uh, the reason I would have voted no confidence in Boris is because it's not really party gate. Draw that aside. It's the policies within the manifesto plan that just are not working. I'm not confident on the migrant plan to Rwanda because there mm. is now over 10,000 that have crossed this year. What is going on with yeah. that? Still nothing has been reached on a deal to try and stop these things crossing. We need stronger border force control, strong border controls as well. Um, another issue is the tax hikes, the increase in the um, the taxes, obviously fuel going up massively, £2 a litre probably in a couple of weeks. Could be paying up to £100 for your um, fuel. I drive a full Fiesta having to pay £100 to fill up that car is going to be a nightmare, trust me. Um, and as well uh, as that as well, also another issue is one I think net zero. Could that be uh, sustainable? We don't know. But it's clear to me, Zach, that the Prime Minister is facing a bit of a rocky um, hill, rocky hill, should I say, in that respect. The thing is, though, Zach, obviously there's been a lot of speculation about a potential Tory leadership contest and some of the candidates that could go in it. Which candidates do you think could potentially be in that role if Johnson get, gets the boot from number 10? Well, um, I, I'll tell you one, child, and one obvious name that could go in there. Um, Jeremy Hunt. Um, I will say his name correctly because there's, there's a few people <laughs> there that somehow um, put a slip up and say the wrong name. But Jeremy Hunt um, is one of them. Because what, I'll tell you why, interestingly, Charlie, he voted no confidence in Boris Johnson. And that was the, one of the bigger names that voted no confidence in, in Boris Johnson in, the, in the, the secret ballot. I mean, people, it is a secret ballot, by the way, Charlie, but people tend to announce their votes ahead of time when necessary as well. But Jeremy Hunt made it clear that he was going to vote against Boris Johnson in the confidence vote on Monday. And he did so. So, and he's very viewed in Tory circles as sort of the guy that run to take over leadership. He did stand against lead against Boris Johnson last time, Charlie. Obviously, he lost that. Um, but there's other names as well. There's talk of like Tom Tugendhat, of, of the chair of the Foreign Select Committee, very strong Conservative, um, very critical of foreign policy and critical of how the Afghan issue was um, dealt with on the ground um, as well. There's obvious other ones. Liz Truss. I think she's sort of shaping, posturing herself for when, you know, if Boris Johnson has to stand down one day, that she's sort of posturing herself as a potential uh, of a continuation Boris Johnson um, in some ways as well. There's also, who do we think as well? Sunak potentially? Well, you know, it could, I could have said that. He, I, I think it would have been a very good chance he would have been leader. Um, a good the favourite a couple of months ago. Now I don't think he is. Um, as well. Um, Penny Maldron is a name that also gets talked about as well. Um, she is, you know, she's an interesting one. She used to be International Defence Secretary, International Trade Secretary. She's got, she's in a lot of roles, Charlie. Um, 
and she's very competent in her role. So she is sort of the one that would be a compromise on both sides of the party here a little bit if they really wanted to get, get her in. Um, she's generally a good performer um, as well. So, yeah, and I, I was just trying to think as well who Tom Tugendhat, you know, Jeremy Hunt, Liz Truss, Ben Wallace potentially. I mean, he's been very well on the defence brief, hasn't he, Charlie? He's been very good. And also Savage Javid potentially as well. And maybe Nadine Zahari. Um, I could see chopping in there as potential names as well, Charlie. But all this talk so far, I don't think, Charlie, isn't going to matter. And um, whilst Boris Johnson still remains in number 10, this all this talk about leadership elections doesn't matter for now. Um, whilst Boris Johnson is still leading the party, and we, it's sort of, we can sort of increase um, the um, the possibilities of talking about who wants to take over who when it get, when Boris Johnson's day of doom gets closer. Um, it may well be at the next election. It may well be sooner than that, Charlie. Well, who knows? Um, so yeah, uh, uh, there is some clear runners and people posturing to get to leadership role, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Well, for now, guys, I'm going to play for you the um, the moment that the no confidence result was announced. This was by the 1922 committee chair, uh, Sir Graham Brady, um, on Monday. Have a listen to this. Certainly banging on their desks rather than clapping their hands. Clapping on the desks and banging the desks is an interesting way to celebrate your Prime Minister avoiding a no-confidence vote. By the way, guys, a no-confidence vote, if Boris Johnson lost that, that means he would have actually have stood down as Prime Minister that day. He would have been forced out of number 10. But it's clear to me that um, we will be talking more about that later on in the show when we get to our Great British Star and Red Devils of the Week. More on that later. Now... Um, we're going to move on to talk about the current situation in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine continues. Russia's special military operation, a.k.a. war, continues um, with devastating consequences already happening in parts of the capital. Kiev this week, missile attacks hitting the capital. And, Zach, clear to me that Russia's biggest offensive on the capital of Ukraine is continuing. Yeah, yeah. Um... Absolutely, Charlie. Um, absolutely. There's been certainly a few events that have happened. Let me take you some. Um, what's happened over the last day, um, the World Chemical Weapons Agency watchdog is basically saying that it's keeping a close on on potential chemical weapons being used in Ukraine, um, potentially as well, which is... We've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks, Charlie, potential chemical weapons, but it hasn't materialised quite yet. Um, uh, that's for the better, I should say, Charlie, Um I think as well, um, which is important. Um, but they have certainly um, managed to cause, to continue to cause chaos, Charlie, um, as well. Yesterday, I believe, Charlie, Ben Wallace met um, President Zelensky in Kyiv um, to talk, discuss the UK's support of um, Ukraine, Charlie. Um, it, uh, the Ministry since said this is a working visit took place this week. Allowed the Defence Secretary here first handle operational needs of Ukraine's armed forces are developing and obviously talk about the needs and wants of Ukraine um, for the UK as well. Um, as well. Um, as um, What else have we got here um, as well? We've got What's another one that I'm going to report on. Russia has yeah, demolished 1,300 high-rise buildings in the city of Mariupol without removing dead bodies. That was another story came through today. Yeah, uh, that's uh, continued destroying... Um, of Mariupol, which is uh, obviously such a shame um, as well. But, you know, uh, the, 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 they, the Russians do seem to love destroying Mariupol and Seven Dinesh for that um, content as well. Interesting here, Charlie, um, Moscow announced it withdrew from Friday from the UN World Tourism Organization because of the, um, um, it got suspended in April. Um, 
I expect no no decent human being would ever want to visit um, Russia um, again. I'm afraid, Charlie, because of the war in there. I mean, no, never not not allowed in as well. Um, there are now thirty seven thousand are in the Ukraine army. Um, and one thousand women have become commanders. The Ukrainian first lady said. Um, so that, that's good to see many people joining the Ukrainian army and just to help out as well. Um, as well, Ukraine has conducted its 11th prison swap with Russia, um, exchanging four Russian captives for five Ukrainians. That's in Mykolaiv, Charlie. Um, and the Ukraine tried to push back Russian troops in the east and the south, um, Charlie, in the port of Odessa as well. Um, something, go, uh, you know, so they're trying to get food in to Odessa because, as you know, there's a lot of ports that you try to get our food basically as well. Um, basically to travel across across the world as uh, as well charlie so yeah that's the latest rush there it's still a, a war going on as well got a little bit quiet over the last few days but it's still a lot going on in russia that you know sorry ukraine that you know you don't necessarily see on tv and kiev i believe was hit as well charlie um kiev had um a few weapons going around charlie that have been um that have it's normally been a bit quiet in kiev but there's been a russia decided to take off um charlie um in kiev um as well they hit buildings um in kiev charlie um so it doesn't seem like they've done there yet there's a bit of a warning over what president um right putin warned is you know the exchanging of weapons from the us to um ukraine obviously putin is very much opposed to that um and yeah so it, and there's a it's typical going on in typical goings on in Ukraine at the moment, Charlie. Um, but the war is still much, very much continuing. Mm, I have to say as well, Zach, there was an interesting interview with the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, on television the early uh, the other day, where he compared himself to Peter the Great. Apparently, on this huh? interview, what do you make of that comment? Um, I don't even understand that comparison, Charlie. Uh, I, I... Uh, it's a bit like the time when he, he decides to make a J.K. Rowling reference to being cancelled or anything like that. I, I, I and mean, it's, it's strange. Um, I mean, it's very, in, it's very clear, um, wonderful to hear. Um, uh, Putin was interested in J.K. Rowling, but Peter the Great, I think, um, pretty, uh, pit more like Peter the Evil, more like I think Charlie. I put that to comparison to anything. Well, uh, it, it's a strange comparison that the that, that, that um, Putin. Uh, has described himself in. Yeah, I have the article here for you. It says, Vladimir Putin's admiration of Peter the Great is well known, but now he seems to have ideas of the greatness himself. He openly compared himself to the Russian Tassar, equating Russia's invasion of Ukraine with, today with Peter's expansionist wars some three centuries ago and making his strongest acknowledgement, yet that his own war is a land grab. Mr. Putin's apparent empire's building ambitions bode ill for Ukraine and have irked other neighbours, including Estonia, which has called his comments completely unacceptable. He also went on to say, uh, you might think that he was fighting with Sweden, seizing their lands, Mr Putin said, referring to the North from wars which Peter launched at the turn of the 18th century as he forged a new Russian empire. But he sees nothing. He reclaimed it. He seized it, arguing the Slavs have lied in the century for us. It, um, seems that it's fallen to us um, to reclaim and strengthen Mr. Putin, concluded with a near smirk that left no doubt he was referring to Ukraine and his aims there. I mean, this is absolute hypocrisy. Um, no, I just, I just did hypocrisy. It's crazy. It's the Russian weird. propaganda machine is clearly trying to use this to promote more propaganda for his country, let alone anything, to try and say that he compares himself to a man who probably was another Soviet dictator all those years ago. Maybe Stalin might have been in the 40s during the mm -hmm. Second World War, but who knows? The war continues in Ukraine. I'm shot with the scenes in Kiev earlier on Monday with more missile attacks, bombings and stuff. It is horrible. I really hope that this war ends and ends with a negotiation from the both sides there, because it's clear to me that the war will continue for many more months mm -hmm. to come. Um, moving on now, before we move on to the um, sport news, I just want to do a quick update 
from the Australian election because we forgot to cover this just a little a few weeks ago, or a little while ago, um, on the show, just a, probably a week or so ago. Um, because Scott Morrison is no longer the PM of Australia, he has been replaced by a new Prime Minister from Labour, and that is Anthony Albanese. Um, both of them took part in ferocious debates and had a huge election just the other week. And Zach, the Labour candidate Anthony Albanese came out on top in that. Yes, Charlie. Scott Morrison's reign in a couple of week a couple of weeks ago came to a finish, um, Charlie, um, as well. Um, he lost the election. He's been a Liberal National Coalition um, for some time now, Charlie, um, and the Liberal, the Liberals and the Nationals. Um, that they have been the governing body for the last several years, but the election took place, Charlie, um, last um, a few weeks ago, Charlie, um, and it resulted in Anthony Albanese winning the election, Charlie, with seventy-seven seats. This is the first time um, that a party's got overall majority um, for for what long, long time now, Charlie. Seventy-seven seats. Um, the party got to Charlie. That's up nine from the last election, while Scott Morrison got 58 um, and lost, and that's a total loss of 19. By the way, Morrison's no longer leader of the Liberal Party anymore, Charlie. Um, that, that is, I don't know who, I don't actually don't know who the leader, new leader is, because I don't actually follow. Um, um, oh, it's Peter Dunton, Peter Dutton, Charlie, is now the new lib, uh, leader of the Liberal Party and the leader of opposition. Um, Su- Susan Lay is the, uh, the deputy leader. Senate leader is Simon Burnham, and the deputy senate um, leader is M- Michelle Cash, Charlie. So yeah, big changes in Australia. And the reason why for this, Charlie, was just a disdain for Scott Morrison in general. People just hated him. Um, you noticed that some of the um, there was a load of liberal um, liberals, Charlie, that were in more a- areas, um, very vulnerable areas, but but with candidates, um, they were sort of challenged by independent candidates, Charlie, that were more liberal-leaning, but supported much more action on climate change. They actually took over liberal seats, Charlie. And at the, de- at the end of the day, that swung the election in some ways to the Labour Party um, as well. As well as It was just a massive swing against the Liberal Party in lots of areas, Charlie, um, uh, as well. And Labour picked up a few seats in Liberal as well. And so did the Greens, by the way, I should point out. The Greens picked up um, a few seats as well. He, they picked up three more seats compared to last time, Charlie, and then they're on four seats. So, yeah, it, it, it is a... It is a... Um, it is a major um, victory for the Labour Party, and now, um, Charlie, they're now governing Australia. Yeah, and it's clear that, that he will continue to um, govern Australia for the moment. He's also going to see... He's also apparently, I believe, travelled to the Beloda family. I mean, he's actually travelled, I think, um, across into parts of, I think, Africa or somewhere um, as well. Um, this is to outline some plans um, to deal... It's actually, no, he's travelled to Indonesia, Southeast Asia, signalling stronger ties with Southeast Asia on Indonesia. So he's actually travelled across um, to uh, meet some leaders over there um, as well. So it's clear that he will... Um, foresee his duties as the Prime Minister of Australia and lead the government. By the way, the Premiers are still in charge of their cities um, and their territories in Australia, that being Victoria, Daniel Andrews, and also there is a new candidate for New South Wales, not Gladys Berejek, and she's, he's been replaced with by Dominic Pirot now, and who's leading that area. Moving on now from the Australian election, we're going to go on to the sport briefing now, which is this next part of the show focusing on sports news, um, I'm going to start with the Azerbaijan Grand Prix qualifying in Formula One. And Zach, I have to say, Charles Leclerc, again, being consistent in qualifying, takes his second pole in a row at Baku. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Charlie. Um, Charles Leclerc um, was on fire today. Um, he really was. Um, it was putting a stunning lap, I have to say, to get pole position. Two tenths um, ahead of... I think it was Sergio Perez in second place. Sergio Perez is a very strong performer recently, Charlie. Um, and, you know, he's he's sl- taken in the role much more well. He's got a new two-year deal as well with Red Bull. So he's stepping up to the plate big time, I think, Charlie. Um, and his performances are showing he's much more comfortable with this year's car. 
and he's really stepping up to the plate. Um, he finished ahead of Max Verstappen, um, who was in third, and Sainz was in fourth. Um, as well. Look at the gaps, by the way, between the top, the, the, the first two teams and the Mercedes. Um, the, the Red Bulls and Ferraris are a second ahead of um, the rest of the field, Charlie. It's quite stunning because obviously, if you think about it, Azerbaijan relies on quite a, a very long front stretch, Charlie. It's very long. It's very, it's, it, you've got to have a lot of power going to it, into it. And it's sort of a, the, it's sort of the, the track that makes or breaks what, um, the lap based on a certain section. I mean, Ferrari's car was great. I mean, I thought this would be more of a Red Bull track, Charlie, because you're in um, the speed on the front stretch and everything like that in sector one. I think what Ferrari's benefits are is that the temperatures for qualifying were, were cooler um, and therefore they were able to get the speed out better, Char Charlie, as well. So, yeah, Leclerc with a great lap. He's starting ahead of the two Red Bulls and ahead of um, Sites. George Russell continues great run in fifth position, um, starting on the grid there. Pierre Gasly, six. Lewis Hamilton avoiding the penalty, by the way, for driving too slowly um, in Q2, I think it was. Yeah. Um, he um, avoids penalty. He starts seventh. Um, Sonoda's eighth. Vettel, good qualifying, by the way, for Vettel. Ninth position. Alonso, tenth. Paul won for the McLaren's, just not fast enough. Eleventh and twelfth. Um, Ocon ahead of Guan Yu, uh, uh, Joe Guan Yu. Um, Paul qualifying for Valtteri Bottas, only 15th for there. Magnussen, Alex Albon, Latifi, uh, Stroll, who crashed out, by the way, and Mick Schumacher is complete the rest of the lineup as well, Charlie. Yeah, the race is tomorrow. Just want to say on qualifying, Lewis Hamilton's avoided a penalty for driving um, unnecessarily slowly. Sebastian Vettel starts ninth tomorrow. He has never finished. I think outside the top four at this track. So he's got a great record here. Um, last year, actually finished second behind the winner, Sergio Perez. And Pierre Gasly, sixth from the grid, finished third last year as well. But it's going to be interesting to see how Charles Leclerc gets on. And Max Verstappen, can he avoid a ret another retirement at this venue? Last year, it was all going well for him. Tire then exploded, um, which meant a red flag was deployed. And the race was eventually stopped and Perez won the eventual short sprint to the end there. So tomorrow, um, around, I think, midday or one o'clock, the race will be on. Um, Sky Sports F1 for the coverage of that event. We're going to move on now from that. We're going to go into IndyCar now um, because they took, um, I, I'm not sure what round this was, but they they, ra they raced at Detroit last weekend. Um where Will Power won his first win of the season. But, Zach, Alexander Rossi put up a very strong drive to finish second. Yeah, um, very strong drive from Alexander Rossi. Good result for him um, as well. It, it, was a, it was a fascinating um, fascinating race overall, Charlie. Um, it, it, was quite a, it was quite a feisty finish, I have to admit, Charlie. Um, as well, it was a very good finish um, to that race. Obviously, with... Um, it, with um, Rossi finishing second and Will Power winning the race. I think that's his first win of the season, Charlie, for Team Penske. Yes. Um, as well um, in Detroit. Now, this weekend, Charlie, they're racing at Road America because it's the second weekend in a row um, that they're racing. Um, Alexander Rossi um, has got the pole for today, Charlie, because qualifying took place today. Um, Alexander Rossi um, has the pole um, for that race, I was just trying to see if I can get up the um, uh, the qualifier. Oh, I'm maybe not. Yeah, it's all right. I do have that up, guys, for you now. Yeah. And um, whilst we're okay. here, I just have the results published. So yeah, it was Rossi, Newgarden, Palo, Ericsson, Herta, and Award the uh, Pass Award that the fast six there um, in Q3, also known as the fast six in NASCAR. Uh, that is basically the fight for pole Q2. Um, the rest of the standings are announced with Colton Herter, Joseph Newgarden, Marcus Ericsson there. Um, eliminated was, I think, Polo, Owald, Rossi. There was a few other drivers that might have been eliminated. This is all, by the way, um, a very confusing system in IndyCar with how they record their qualifying and that. Um, but the fast six was, I believe, Rossi on pole for tomorrow. Uh, but Zach, what did you make, though, back to Detroit? What did you make to Roman Grosjean's pretty scary accident in qualifying? Yeah, uh, it was a pretty nasty accident, I have to admit, Charlie. I mean, I mean, he, he was lucky to... It, he's, 
lucky to get away with that uh, with the crash that he had because it was um, a quite big crash, wasn't it, Charlie? Um, have to you have to say, um, and he was lucky to get away with that, that accident. But um, yeah, I mean, it was quite a big accident. To be fair, Charlie, I mean, I mean, he's okay. I mean, he's not. He's, he's had one. He's one for having um, big accidents, isn't he, Charlie? No doubt about it. Um, but yeah, he, he he was lucky that he was able to get uh, get away with that one. Yeah, look at 2020 in Bahrain. Just remember that crash when the has it has VF20 lit up in flames um, after the um, engine cover basically um, decided to part ways with the car, basically shredded the Hass in half. Um, but Grosjean, miracle of miracles, as Murray Walker would it put was it, a high in impact. a yeah. commentary um, to Martin Brundle's crash in 1996 in, in Australia, uh, where he went over the back of David Coulthard's McLaren and Johnny Herbert Salber that year. Um, Brundle got out of the, the crash fairly unscathed. Um, like it showed you just the strength of the modern F1 car now. Um, and IndyCar yeah. as well, obviously, Grosjean is crashing qualifying. I don't think Grosjean had that great of a race in Detroit. I don't think he done. I don't think he finished in the top ten actually. So Grosjean's weekend in Detroit not great. He's had a difficult year this year. I have to say, not been on. He's not been like that much in IndyCar this year. Driving style. Look at when he was at Barber. He had a bit of an issue with Graham Rahal um, as well. It's not been a great year for him so so far. I have to say um, as well. So the next IndyCar race is tomorrow. That's at Road America. Um, please tune into that one, guys. Um, that would be an elk cart late in the United States for that one. Um, so that is IndyCar. NASCAR now raced at the Worldwide Technologies Raceway last week. Um, Joey Logano winning that race um, in the Ford Mustang there, Team Penske. Um, but Zach, that race had a few interesting moments, including Chase Elliott, who spun around very massively during the middle of the race. Oh yeah, he's certainly Charlie. Um, Joe um, Elliot had a bit of an incident, spun round in the middle of the race. Um, very costly for him, Charlie. No doubt about it. Um, as well, the one other thing I want to talk about is Ross Chastain, Charlie. Um, I, I was watching this, um, watching the um, most of the race actually, and Ross Chastain had a very big come together. I think it was Denny Hamlin he came out a big come yeah. together with, and I thought they were getting they were getting right into the scraps, Charlie. Um, they were. It was almost sort of like they were having a, having a war with each other on the track. You have to say. Um, so there was clearly a bit of bad blood there. But Ross Chastain said in his interview afterwards that he was, he, he missed his fault for the incident, Charlie, and his attitude towards it. Um, it's not often because you normally think they see these guys fighting and going straight in for it, and then you know having a tussle potentially with NASCAR official having to get involved and um, when they have a nice little physical with each other, but. Um, yeah, it was very interesting to see the end of the race where Ross Chastain was very disappointed in his own behaviour, Charlie. But yeah, Logano um, managed to fight off um, Kyle Busch um, at the end, Charlie, uh, Charlie, to win the race. Um, Kurt Busch was in for, for, um, finished behind his brother Kyle in third. Blaney was fourth. Almo fifth. Trick sixth. Extra in seventh. Um, Ross Chastain eighth. Um, you know, he, he's admitted his behaviour to some that he might not have been brilliant, Charlie, in that race. Christopher Knight, AJ Elmerdin in 10th, Charlie, um, as well. I do not believe, um, now going to this weekend, Charlie, they are at Sonoma. I do not believe we've had qualifying yet. Um, I will double check, but I do not believe, um, no, qualifying is not in, in, until an hour's time, by the way, Charlie. So we do not have the grid yet, um, but qualifying is in. Um, is going on now currently charlie if i'm correct uh, or maybe not maybe not um oh yeah there's no xfinity series this weekend um but it is i think back at nashville there was um we are getting i believe as well camping world truck series that could be tonight charlie although it's 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 chase hocarver on the pole ahead of ross chastain um although hocar's having to go to a backup charlie because he crashed um, at the end of the session, although his time wasn't beaten, he put in a great lap. Um, unfortunately, he ended up crashing. Um, so he ended up he's, he, he's going to a backup, so that means going to the rear of the field. Unfortunately, big shame for him. 
Um, because Julian's come back from injury from a few weeks ago. It's great, it's great to see him try to put them in the fast slap. But Chastain will be the one that will be starting ahead of um ahead of Kyle Bush and Ty Majeski um behind as well and the 16 of Oak room, I don't know what his name is. Um Alex Bowman, Joe Nibacek, um great in figure as well behind and Hayley De- Deegan as well in ninth position and Sam Freinstein in tenth position as well. So that's the grid um for the truck series race. Um, tonight, which is at the brilliant time, um, our sleepy time of 12.30 this morning. And then the race tomorrow for the um, Cup Series race is at 9pm UK time as well, Charlie. Yeah. And that is a Toyota so Safe Mark 350 as well, that race. The Toyota Safe Mark 350 at Sonoma um, as well. I just also want to give you an update from the NASCAR action because... Um, Sonoma has come back with a big change. They called it Oh, oh Shoot um, on this Fox News headline here um, as well. Um, because NASCAR's routes might be moonshine, but it's fine. But it's not the same track as last year. From the 1998-2018, NASCAR used a different layout than the other series, which eliminated the series of turns known as the carousel and placed them straight. Called the shoot that connected turns four to seven. NASCAR tried using carousel in 2019 and 21. 2020 was cancelled due to coronavirus, but the driver said they preferred the shoot layout, so they're bringing it back that this year. So the shoot layout, I think, goes into um, the final corner at turn 11, or turn 11, the hairpin, and turn 12. That is going to be, I think, used again. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, the shoot layout is uh, very popular. Mod, uh, Kyle Larson... Um, is the defending winner of this race who won last year at Sonoma. So that is the race there. That's the Toyota Save Mark 350. And also, guys, on tonight and tomorrow, today and tomorrow, literally have no idea this was on this weekend. It's a 24 hours Le Mans um, this weekend. I literally had no idea the race was on and we have plenty of action. So um, bear with me, guys, because trust me, I have not been following this very closely at all. Um, so I'm sure Zach might have to help me with that here. Yeah, we do have I might have to. Some live updates from the 90th running of the Le Mans 24 Hours. Zach, what's the action been like so far in that event? Um, it's been interesting. I've been trying to be dipping in and out um, whilst um, the uh, F1, is, F1 is on. Obviously, I'm still watching the um, the England game at the moment, Charlie, um, because... Um, there, there, um, there is. Um, but let me just tell you who's running first at the moment, Charlie. It's Kamu Kobayashi and um, the Toyota Hybrid um, ahead of Ro Hiraka um, in second place, ahead of Louis um, Louis Fli- Louis Deltras, Durani, sorry, and F- Frank Mullix, um also in the the glass as well. Um, so that's the hypercar lot um, as well. Uh, the Robert Roberto Canales is leading in LMP. Two, um, let's see who's leader in LMP2, um, MPPA as well, Lot Hoare, um, as well in the LMGTE Pro. It's Antonio Garcia that's leading in the Corvette, um, and in LMGTA, ETE AM, it is Cooper Michelle in WeatherTech Racing at the moment that's lead, leading the ra- uh, race in that category at the moment, Charlie. So we've still got how many hours ago? Oh, I, could, I don't even know. Um, we've still got 17 hours, 31 minutes remaining, Charlie, of the race. Um, but it is the Twitches that are leading the... Um, and the number seven car of Camus Kobayashi that's leading the 24 hours of Le Mans at yeah. the moment. Yeah, and also as well, guys, you can also keep up to date with the live timings of Le Mans as well. Um, this is the current situation as we speak. Class leaders um, of the event. Um, I believe this might, I'm not sure this is live footage, but we've got some 24 hour of Le Mans um, class leaders at the moment. We've got, um, as you say, number one, Toyota G10 Hybrid. They're leading the hypercar class. LMP2 is led by an Orica 07 Gibson. In fact, all cars in that are Orica 07 Gibsons. Uh, the leader of GT Pro is a Corvette, uh, Chevrolet Corvette C8R. Um, and GT Am is the Porsche 911 RSR 19. Um, there's a couple of that in that event. Watch out because the GT3s are pretty good. The 911 mm. RSRs definitely are very interesting. Watch out for them 
um, on the track. Now, it's time for Charlie's good news now. What good news, guys, do I have in store for you this week? Well, um, there's a quite a lot, actually, um, to talk about if you're going to go good news. Well, in a little while, I'm going to talk about somewhere in Coventry that's deserved a nomination for the Great British Star and Red Devil. You might all know what that is, but I'm not going to tell you just yet because you might think that I'm being a bit crazy with what I'm going to say. So let's crack on with the news this week. A couple of good news stories I'm going to start with. Number one, I'm going to start with, obviously, something very, very important motorsport-wise, which is coming this weekend to you. This is the American Speed Fest um, event that is taking place at Brands Hatch this weekend. It is on tomorrow. I just want to say to you guys that American Speed Fest is on there. I'll give a shout out to them um, for racing this weekend as well. So that is one of the things I'm mentioning. But next weekend, guys, is Father's Day, which means next Saturday and Sunday, there is going to be a car show in Chelmsford. The Father's Day Motor Fest Ooh. returns to Highlands Park. Yes, if you went to Creamfields, you'll know that this event actually was on. It is going to be a huge event. It's actually called Mo Motor Fest. Um, I believe it's near Highlands Park, if I'm correct. It says Margaret in Rittle Chelmsford, um, apparently. Um, the details are on screen. It's between 8 and 4.30, um, and it's going to be a huge event, guys. You should really look forward to enjoying this. There's going to be plenty of of um, car displays, probably see some classics like Ford Escorts, um, Chevrolet Corvettes. Mm -hmm. um, I remember actually seeing a VW Type 2 there once, believe it or not, um, <laughs> going back to my petrol head days. So um, your lovely classic cars. Great um, this cars event there. Is for you um, taking place 18th to 19th of June 2022 at, in Chelmsford, that will be. Um, so Chelmsford will host that event. Please be aware, guys. Let's hope the weather's nice as well for that event. Speaking of the weather, the Met Office are apparently saying we could get a hot spell next week as well. Yes. Now, if you're a weather, if you're a weather um, or meteorologist, as you call it, or weather man, if you want to be a bit more sort of simpler with your pronunciation in this, um, the weather next week could get even more interesting. So let's have a look, guys, at the Wet Office forecast here in Basildon. Just to give you an idea of what I'm on about. Um, this here is the current forecast, which is in Basildon right now for you, which is high loads of 13 degrees tonight, 18 degrees currently, the weather, which, by the way, is fairly warm. But look at the trend. Now, obviously, these temperatures could change. Um, the Met Office here have said this could go to 22 tomorrow, 20, 21 but then look at the end of the week. Temperatures there degrees. rising into the mid-20s as well. We also have an up a graph here from the BBC weather, which shows probably a very similar outlook um, for Basildon here as well. As you can see, the BBC's one's a little bit more clearer, giving you forecasting for slightly more days. You can see there next week, what guys, potentially temperatures could go as high as 27 to 28 degrees, maybe in some areas could get into the low 30s potentially. We do not know that. There is a low pressure system, I think, or a high pressure system building across the country. And please be aware, guys, um, if you are in the hot weather, make sure you keep an eye on it, especially the pollen levels um, as well, because um, if you suffer from hay fever, please note that the allergies um, will be... Very, very important. Um, obviously, if you suffer from hay fever, please take extra precautions, extra advice from your doctors, um, tablets there as well um, on specific ones. And just in general, guys, if it gets hot next week, guys, I really hope everyone can enjoy it. And oh, there'll certainly God. be very, not the most comfortable for MPs in Parliament wearing suits and ties <laughs> and everything. So, they're they're, they're going to be gonna awful, be... Charlie. They're going to be <laughs> awful. I mean, in fairness, Charlie, I mean, it, 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 last year, I think it was May, at the end of May, we were getting like 30 degree conditions. So I think it took it taken until like late, late in June to get mid June to get, get to like 27, 28. So it's taken a little bit longer this year. But um, yeah, it, it, it's going to be one of those warm days, Charlie, where we're going to have to have all the windows out. Um, 
And I thought I'm going to be out on the weekend, next weekend, considering that um, as well. I expect a lot of people are going to go, go out, go to the beaches um, as well. It's going to be quite a fun for a lot of people, I think. Um, yeah. But I, not, not, fun if, not, not, not fun trying to find the fan or trying to open the window and then you get all the pesky flies that come in. Um, not pleasant for me because I, I don't like – it's not like I don't like flies, Charlie. It's just I'm very reactive <laughs> around flies. I'm not allergic to them. They're just too annoying. Can't stand them, um, so yeah, I have to, I have to open all the room, you know, like that. But that's okay. Um, it's one of those years where I can sort of get a fan in front of me, do my usual thing, and just relax um, in the hot weather. Really, to be fair, indoors, Charlie. Because, so yeah, it's it's not going to be um, very warm and very very pretty. Um, if you even if you want to sweat away and just um, sort of bear down a little bit, then just <laughs> you. Um, I, I don't do those sort of things, um, thankfully. Um, <laughs> not in the not in the house, but um, yeah, it's going to get hot next weekend. Um, yeah, I expect that people are going to enjoy it, especially probably on Saturday as well with Father's Day oh, yeah. weekend. Would Would you ask me to wear shorts? I don't actually know whether I will, but I I love for some reason just covering my legs up with jeans or chinos. So, um, yeah, you know what, Charlie, I'm I'm a fussy runner, okay? Because sometimes. Like when I used to go on holiday and everything like that, I would seriously. I'm not kidding you, but I would wear jeans onto a beach. Now I'm. I know that sounds really odd, <laughs> but I gently did that, and I wound a few people up saying, "Why are you wearing jeans on the beach? You normally wear shorts." And I'm thinking, "Well, that's just my style, you know." So, and people, I, and people take the pee out of me for doing that sort of thing. But yeah, um, it, 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 I, I wear shorts inside anyway. It's not, nothing embarrassing about that anyway, but it's sort of the style that people decide to use, really, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll keep you updated on the weather next week, guys. See what I'm wearing, as you know, tonight. I'm in denim, so there you go um, on that one. But it's time now to move on and talk about the papers now because we have a lot of newspapers to get you oh, through this evening. Tomorrow's. Um. I'm not sure oh, we are on tomorrow's papers We've got one today. Paper, Charlie. We've got Let's one have paper a look can, at our papers. The Saturday so, ones. so these look like Saturday's ones. I will update that for you now because there's probably going to be some new papers coming out. Doesn't seem like. Oh, here we go. Right. Oh, there's one Let's of go. Them. There's what? Let's do one of them. We'll do one of them and then we'll do the others. So it's the Observer minute. with a headline saying Johnson faces rural fury over post-Brexit food strategy. We're going to round up that paper first in a minute, but I'll go over some of today's other papers, proper papers for today. Daily Mirror goes with Danielle Killer in Freedom Bid. The Times goes with Prince Charles saying flying migrants to Rwanda is appalling. Interesting <laughs> comment there from the Prince. The Daily Mail goes with PM's plans to grow Britain. That's Boris Johnson pictured with a cow. There. One. <laughs> the Guardian goes for the food, PM's food strategy is a huge missed opportunity. The Daily Mail echoes the um, Times' headline there saying that um, let um, let refugees stay home. Let's stay home. Surging UK travel holidays. Actually, go. Um, Daily Mail story goes with Charles attacks a Pauli Mwanda scheme. Daily Express actually goes with let's stay home. Surge in UK holidays. As travel chaos bites, more on RMT in a minute regarding Ralph strikes. Um, the Daily Star goes for the wedding sinner. <laughs> the wedding this headline: Britney Spears ex hubby crashes singer's big day. I weekend goes for Tory rebels in a new plot to unseat Johnson. The Prime Minister faces more pressure to go from number ten. And the Financial Times goes for Johnson snubs. Food shake-up in a bid to keep right-wingers on his side. Um, Zach, what do you make to the latest newspapers? Oh, right. OK, where should we start? Let's go over the um, Tomorrow's Observer, Charlie, because that's the only paper that we have out for tomorrow. Um, this is talking about um, the um, some... Well, let's talk about some rural... Air, um, let's talk about rural areas, Charlie, um, and some farming air, uh, company um, organisations uh, that have come out against really the post-Brexit strategy for farming, food um, as well. Um, the um, the food environment, farmers and environments condemned his government post-Brexit food strategy as a disaster for people 
in in the countryside. Um, this is talking about Tiverton and Horton, Charlie, because you know there's going to be a by election in two weeks' time. The Lib Dems are the kind of like got the momentum there, um, Charlie, in, in that by election because of the conservative woes. Um, I want to see a poll for Tiverton and Horton because I don't think we've seen one yet. We've seen one for Wakefield where Labour is twenty points ahead. Um, but I haven't seen one for Tiverton and Horton yet, Charlie. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, that would be one for uh, to see. But yeah, this, this is where the Lib Dems are going to be camping on, Charlie. Farmers, the fact that Boris Johnson has let down farmers um, and lower, reduced um, food standards um, as well. By the way, Boris Johnson visited, visited Cornwall, I think it was yesterday, Charlie, and mm. not the greatest reception, I have to say, Charlie, from what I am reading as well. Let's go with the today's um, papers, Charlie. The Daily Mirror goes for um, the kill of a school... Oh, dear. What's happened there? Okay. Don't know what happened there. Um, the killer of schoolgirl Daniel Jones is making a bid for parole, Charlie. Um, this is... We've seen this sort of thing before, Charlie, uh, where they, these claims have sort of kind of been successful in in some ways, Charlie, um, as well. We've seen a, a baby peace killer um, mother actually given, given payroll and getting bailed out as well, Charlie. Um, so I, I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if this one happens as well, uh, Charlie. But this one is a direct murderer, to be fair. So it's kind of less likely to happen. I just hope it does. He's going to be, he'd be um, really um, be locked up forever. Um, let's move on to the Times. This is an interesting one, Charlie. Um, this is also, I'll cover the Times and the Mail um, in the same one, Charlie, because they're it's the same stories here. Um Print, we all have opinions in some ways, Charlie. Even the royals are not shy of an opinion um, as well. And it appears that one of the private conversations has, of Prince Charles has leaked to the Times and the Mail, Charlie. Um, he called the um, migrants, flying migrants to Rwanda appalling. This is on the, um, the events of what happened yesterday when judges announced that um, the, um, they did not grant an injunction to stop a deportation that's due to be happening on, I think it's Monday or Tuesday, Charlie, of um, a certain number of immigrants to Rwanda. Um, this should be the first set that should be going off to Rwanda. Now, there's been, obviously, lawyers coming in, injecting, and trying to get injunctions in, uh, for individuals, Charlie. Um, but it's not necessarily happened for all of them. I mean, the individual has been something that's successful. Um, some haven't, but... The, the fact that a royal, a royal conversation is elite isn't brilliant. I mean, I'm not objecting to people having opinions, Charlie, um, in private. And I don't think he should be attacked for having an opinion in private, Charlie. As long as you display that impartiality on, when you're in, on public, that's fine. But, yeah, someone's obviously decided that they don't like what they've heard from Charles and decided to sneak it to the papers. Um, so that, that's the, the headline of the mail and the Times. Let's go for the mail version of this, actually. Charles attacks a Paul and Rwanda scheme, um, claims a past tension of the PM, and judges rules. obviously that's the ruling as well, about the Rwanda one. Um, let's go to the Telegraph. They go for PM's plan to grow for Britain. Um, um, farmers urge to put more resources into fruit and vegetables to help ease cost of living and food threat from Ukraine war. So they're talking about PM wanting the farmers to, to grow more plants, basically. Um, understandable, but it's not going to be a quick fix overnight, I don't think, Charlie, um, as well on this one. And it's the, the, the same goes for the Guardian. The PM food strategy, a huge missed opportunity. That's what they go for as well. This is on the same strategy um, as well. No mention of sugar tax or plans to reduce meat and dairy in leaked paper so um if the government wants to go a bit more green in terms of food um uh, people are saying he hasn't really done enough in that um in that, that area as well um let, let's go for the next one. what should we go here right we'll go for the express because i've done the mail um let's stay home surging holidays as travel chaos bites um yeah it's not surprised the, 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 the travel has been absolutely chaotic over the last few weeks charlie has been cancellations everywhere there's been people problems trying to get in and out of the country um it, it's terrible charlie and i expect this is gonna be a huge problem mm. as we get 
summer holiday. If, if they don't fix this in, in a weeks, um, in months or so time, Charlie, there's going to be big, big issues, um, especially with the planes and everything like that. And people want to get away, then they're going to not enjoy this. So, and it's it's influencing people to actually, Charlie, stay at home um, and do new staycations instead. Um, which I can understand people want to do that and change plans very quickly. And watch out on the 21st of June as well. RMT have announced yes. that they are planning a rail strike. What the hell and is going on? Yeah, there's going to be 50,000 apparently are going to go on strike, Charlie. It's going to be a massive, massive strike um, as well. The government are really pretty fed up with it, going out all out war with the RMT union um, as well, Charlie. So, yeah, it's going to be look out for that little. Um, arguments between the RMT and the government pick up the next few weeks um, if this strike continues to go ahead and does not get cancelled. Um, looking at the comedy paper for today, Charlie, it's the Daily Star, as usual, with their comic front pages. This is the wedding sinner. Um, I have to say, Charlie, if you're going to gatecrash a wedding, that's not... Uh, if looking at the pictures there, doesn't doesn't look like the British way to gatecrash a wedding. This involves Britney Spears. Because um, he, she, he, she married... Sam Ashley in a star stuff bash that was gate crash by her ex Jason Alexander Charlie. I have to say that doesn't look like the prettiest of um gate crashing. There's one on the floor looks like um he's been farted on, the other that's been topped over just roly poly into somebody else. Um it's um I bet that hurt. I bet that hurt when you saw someone gate crash like that. But yes, mm. Britney Spirit is now a newly married person. Once again, congratulations to her. And Love way. Island um, star Liam quits as well. Another thing that's been on and, the news. Uh, yeah, Liam, I watched Love Island last night. Poor Liam. It looked, he's a nice guy, but also didn't fit there. The other comic value one, Cal Fart's tax, Charlie. Can I just go back to that Daily Star page, Charlie? There is this one. <laughs> Cal Fart's tax to save the planet. Um, we're going to fart out money now, Charlie. That'll be interesting. Um, I, I can't fart out money. I wish I could fart out money, Charlie, but I, I'll be rich otherwise being out of time to do that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so watch out, cows. Um, uh, don't fart too much. That's all I have to say. Um, <laughs> the I Weekend talks about um, the, the Tory, more the political side, Charlie. Um, they talk about the Tory rebels again, Charlie. They're just trying to use a, a, a different way of unseating Boris Johnson, they you sort of trying to use the grassroots of the Tory ch um, party, Charlie, to unseat the Prime Minister. I don't think this one's going to work, Charlie, because I don't think this is a legal way to do this. Um, so, um, party with on 65 local Tory chairmen to hold a general meeting and vote against the PM. Um, that's not an official way, Charlie, to get the Prime Minister out, unfortunately. He can survive that with our way. It's not really a legal definition of ruling, forcing the Prime Minister out. So it will just be a more of a, a trivial um, sort of wish list for that sort of thing to happen. But rebels are still rebels, unfortunately, Charlie, and they're going to try and find many way, different ways to oust the prime minister. And that's one of them. And I think this is the final one. Johnson snubs food shake up in bids to keep right wingers on side. Um, as well, the sugar and salt tax being details. Um, also on the economic side, the highest US inflation in four days, a decade, Charlie. Um, I expect it's going to get worse here as well, but US is suffering a massive inflation increase, Charlie. I expect that may well affect how things are going to be viewed in the midterms, Charlie, because there is, what is it? Um, four, five months ago now, until the midterm elections, Charlie, where control of Congress is up for grabs, and seeing headlines are like that, you don't want to be them. You don't want to be Joe Biden at the moment, Charlie. Yeah, so Republicans will rally you on that one. Yeah, certainly, Charlie. Um, there's going to be a lot of issues that can be debated um, in 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 the next couple of months, Charlie. But yeah, that is currently the situation. It doesn't appear we've got any more front pages to look at, Charlie. So that's the front pages for today and the one tomorrow as well. Yeah, so that's all the papers there as well. Um, more papers will be coming out later on this evening. Now, before we go, I did also forgot to review the Formula E race in Marrakesh. Just wanted to say Mitch Evans won that race for Jaguars. Zach, what did you make of that Formula E race before we move on and do the Great Britain Star? Yeah, I watched, I, I watched that on record, Charlie. It was a um, good Evan, win for Mitch Evans as well. Managed to hold off in the last lap. Very impressive work, Charlie. It was a great last couple of laps. Um, very low on power. 
but they managed to edge their way to the finish line, Charlie. It was a great race overall. Yeah, Mitch Evans winning that race there for Jaguar and putting himself into the championship fight. Full standings available on the Formula E website there for the results. Now it's time to move on to a slightly different final segment of the show. The Great British Star Red Devil is has been enhanced. Yes, mm. it has been enhanced now. From this week, me and Zach have to change our nominations up in the way we are announcing them. So we're going to have one nomination or a joint nomination for the Great British Storm Red Devil, whatever you want to do. But we also have an honorary nomination as well that we're going to give out. An honorary nomination is someone that we are going to pick out from random. And it's basically someone that we think has been the star of the week. So I'm going to start with my nominations this week. We'll do my honorary nominations after what's well, after Zach gives his out. Let's start with the nomination for the Great British Star. Now, I'm actually going to change these up a bit here because I put these down as the wrong way round. But basically, the Great British Star nominations are going to be for not uh, are going to be mainly targeted at political sporting stuff. The honorary nominations going to be targeted more towards the sort of general aspect. Mind you, they can be either or either. Right, we're going to start with the um, Great British Star this week. I'm going to give that to Ben Wallace for visiting Volodymyr Zelensky in Ukraine. I won't usually give it to a Conservative MP, but Ben Wallace went out to Kiev whilst that city has been under siege by Russia this week. It was a very brave thing of him to do, to go out there and try and persuade to Zelensky that we will deliver more weapons to your country which is what Russia do not want. They don't want more weapons delivered to Ukraine. They threaten more nuclear action in the air and on the ground. So that is my nomination there, Ben Wallace. Russian politicians get a nomination for the Red Devil this week because I have to say, if you are Sergei Lavrov or Vladimir Putin, you had a bad week. Now, I'll tell you why. Vladimir Putin... Compared himself to Peter the Great, that isn't true. But Sergei Lavrov gets a nomination for a press conference in which a Ukrainian reporter basically questioned him on something to do with, like, I think this was to do with, like, basically, like, supplies of oil or something. Um, but the Ukrainian reporter basically, like, questioned Lavrov on something. And Lavrov basically then went on talking about his special military operation in Ukraine, basically referring to the Ukraine as neo-Nazis and stuff like that, basically dodging the question. And I think at one point, even walking out of a press conference. Good um, God. Well. Russia actually walked out of a press conference this week as well. I think it might have been that one that Lavrov actually walked out of. Um, he, he, it's clear that he's not enjoying it. So, what do you make to my first nomination? This set of nominations there. Yeah, not bad, mate. Um, I like the shake up we're doing here a little bit as well. It makes it more interesting to search for nominations this week, um, as well. Right. Let me. St so, let's start off um, with my nominations, Charlie. Um, I'm gonna first of all, my British star of the week, Charlie. Um, I'm going to give it to this Ukrainian. Tina Charlie, um, he um, managed to use his very own drone to spot a Russian convoy coming to his town and provided real time positionary information to the Ukrainians um, so that they could destroy it. This is a this is a teenager, by the way, Charlie, um, using his drone to allow the, the Ukrainians to destroy a Russian um, convoy. That was coming around. This is his 50. He's only 15, Charlie, this one um, as well. Um, it was a 15-year-old, um, Charlie, that did this intervention, Charlie. Um, it was either, uh, that's incredible, Charlie. It's incredible that a 15-year-old can influence um, and basically, inf um, you know, do a whistleblow to the Ukrainians as the convoy come to his town. Um, is Andrea Porcaras, um is his name um, as well. Um, he, after conveying the convoy's position, he 
passed the information to his father, who in turn sent to the Ukraine military over a social media tower, which resulted in the convoy's just destruction. I mean, wow. It's incredible this, what this teenager has managed to do, Charlie. It, 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 he's been held as it, it quietly been held as the of the Ukraine. Andrew Prusky, um, he's just one of a thousand civil drone operators that aid in the country's defence with everyday drones. Well done to him, Charlie. It, it, that is incredible as well. Um, the Red Devils, Charlie, well, it's easy for this, but the Red Devils go to the Conservative Party for their total um, infighting and you know, pettiness um, whilst voting for Boris Johnson to be as confident in their leader. Also, they're going to give um, an honorary Red Devil, Charlie, to the MP um, Heather Wheeler, who described um, the North places of Birmingham and Blackpool as God awful in a speech, Charlie, this week. A Tory MP calling Birmingham and um, Blackpool God awful awful charlie um, <laughs> he, she made that remark at a conference in london as she launched the government's new digital um strategy she later apologized saying she made an inappropriate remark that did not reflect the actual view the deputy leader of the labor party was quick to come in and just call it calling her an utter contempt um charlie so it's very interesting it's a choice that's supposed to be the party of the north slagging off northern places I'm sure the Tory MP of Blackpool, Scott Benton, will be really proud of that um, remark from Heather Wheeler. Um, I'm sure Jess Phillips has had also plenty to say on social media about that as well, Charlie. Um, so, yeah. Um, Honourable mention, mem, um, um, one of this week, Charlie, I know you wanted me to do this, but I'm going to give it to Liam from Love Island. Um, I know he's not, it's a bit tricky to quit sometimes off a reality show, and there's a lot of pressure on you. But the fact that he decided to, you know, it was best to just give in and go rather than suffer mental health problems whilst in the villa. Fair play to him. Because otherwise, you know, he could have just been the nice guy that's sort of been left out, really, and mocked about. But fair play to him, Charlie. He'd get the honourable reward um, for me this week. Yep, that, so that's your nominations. Here comes my nominations. And the great, the honorary British star goes to this in, in TikTok sensation. Let's let's see what it is. Have a listen to this. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> this West Midlands chippy is the place to be. Travelling all the way from Ireland. All the way to Dublin. We were originally from Suffolk and Essex, but we've been in Birmingham. <laughs> I've heard a lot of commotion about the chippy, so I've come to uh, taste it, try it. He's excited. <laughs> the shop's name went viral after it was turned into a song on social media. It's so popular, police have been regularly checking the area, <laughs> asking customers to be considerate to people living nearby. I've lived in Coventry all my life. I've just looked here and there's been masses and masses amount of people here. Now, obviously, that slowed down the traffic as well, but <laughs> chips are chips. I know, that's it, thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Look at this. In Lee Mega Chippy, fish and chips. It's got to be done, isn't it? I've just got to try it. Here we go. Absolutely incredible. All I've got left to do now is pay. And I'm not the only one having their fish cake and eating it. Woo! You've got your average chippy, really. It's nice, but it's all right. Yeah, it's a nice curry sauce. It was worth the wait. Staff are seeing 10 times more customers than usual and are giving profits made from merchandise to charity. I've got more things coming, like little badges and uh, little stickers that say, oh, I've been to Mega, uh, Billy Mega Chippy. And this success that we've gained through the internet um, that's happening now, you know, it's just a blessing. So we'd like to tell the public, you know, that we, 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 we thank you so much and give, we want to give something back. This may be five seconds of fame, but the song will stay in people's heads forever. Bradley Harris, 5 News, Bindley. Yes. If you've seen what that video was about, Bindley Mega Chippy gets the nomination for the honorary yes, great British star. Now, the reason I'm going to give them the nomination this week is because of this viral mm. song that went viral on the internet. Basically, Bindley Mega Chippy... Um, started out as an unassuming local chip shop. Now it's arguably one of the most 50, 
food and chips on the planet. Definitely most famous at TikTok anyway. For four years, English chippy serving pie for two pound forty, fish and chips, and of course, um, at the, that on the hunt for one of the UK's ninth largest city, Coventry. A regal version in red and gold has been reliable oasis for fried delicates and cold drinks for tired drivers making their way along Co Coventry's A428. But like planning an urban space is the eye bucket challenge. The internet took Binley Mega Chippy and turned it into a viral TikTok fiesta and culinary destination. TikTok UK put hello, everyone who has Binley Mega Chippy of their FYP and the song in there had free reign hashtag binny mecca chippy um as well it was on the internet tiktok guys has become viral with the way that look at this i mean the number of people here is huge i mean you could honestly see the police have probably had to be put in presence there around the area um due to that so binny mecca chippy gets my nomination for the great british star this week the red devil honorary red devil goes to the driver who crashed the, a um, car in Berlin. I think it was a Volkswagen Polo or yeah. something that crashed into a crowd of people. I think around 30 people were killed in that crash, I think, um, if I remember. But a horrible accident in Berlin. John Barrowman was on Good Morning Britain explaining that earlier in the week. Is that what you make to my honorary nominations? Well, first of all, Charlie, welcome to the Bindi Mega Chippy um, crew. I mean, yes, mate. I mean... <laughs> I, I, I must admit, right, it, I, I don't always like TikTok, but the Binley Mega Chippy story is just, I, it's just beautiful, honestly. It's a start of, it, someone's made a song out of it. Their business has managed to go extremely viral um, because of it. And it's just incredible how much people are just shoving off to Coventry and going to this Binley Mega Chippy shop. Um it is incredible. You see all the influencers with TikTokers that are going there. Wow. I mean, I have to say, fair play, Charlie. It is an absolute business, small business sensation, thanks to TikTok. I mean, this is the good things about it um, as well. So, yeah, I totally agree with you on that one. Yeah, that's a what's a pick, Charlie. What's a pick? What did you make of the Berlin crash as well? Yes, um, that was pretty horrible whoever did that charlie shame on them i mean we've had an, an many incidents of trying people trying to go up pavements and harm people charlie and we can't let society do that um there will be it will be incidents like this again but it's just horrible that people have to resort to doing this sort of nasty stupid thing that they do it's not it's not on charlie yeah look at the us if you want um gun controls um on the agenda more on that next weekend on the show um certainly there'll be big debates on that on the news but unfortunately guys that's all we've got time for on the charlie told her show and thank you so much for watching live on youtube and of course um if you're off the bin you make a chippy um, in the next few days <laughs> please let us know what your experience is like because all the influencers on there got my nomination this week for the great british star the honorary one you did too my friends thank you so much for listening everyone Take care and we'll see you next time for another edition of the Charlie Tolman Show. Take care and goodbye.